Hello there everybody, Martin here from Affinity for Commander. Today we have an extremely bizarre game for your entertainment, so without further ado, let's take a look at those opening hands. I am playing my Tatsunari Toad Rider Enchantment deck, and keep an opening hand consisting of Awakened Awareness, Destiny Spinner, Overgrowth, Thirst for Meaning, Temple of Deceit, Underground River, and an Island. Johnny is playing his Evelyn the Covetous Interaction deck, and keeps a starting hand of Arcane Zenit, Quickling, Sky Diamond, Smoldering Egg, Displacer Kitten, an Island, and a Swamp. Andrew is playing his Xenagos God of Revels Smashy Smashy deck, and keeps a starting hand consisting of Rancor, Farseek, Sylvan Library, a Mountain, and a Forest. And finally, Callum is playing his Jeska Thrice Reborn and Godama of the East Tree value deck, keeping an opening hand of Soul Ring, Tireless Tracker, Gruel Turf, and Tectonic Edge. Johnny wins the die roll, plays an island, and passes to Andrew. Andrew plays a forest and passes. I play Temple of Deceit, scrying the top card of my library to the bottom, and end my turn. Callum plays Tectonic Edge and casts Soul Ring before passing to Johnny. Johnny begins his turn by playing a Swamp, casts Soul Ring, casts Arcane Signet, and casts Sky Diamond. Sweet Urza! With 6 mana on turn 2, a very happy Johnny passes the turn. Andrew plays a Mountain and casts Farseek. He searches his library for Sheltered Thicket, puts the land into play tapped, and ends his turn. In my turn, I play Underground River and pass to Callum. Callum plays Gruel Turf, returning Tectonic Edge to his hand. Unable to do anything else, he passes. Johnny plays Command Tower and taps a handful of his many mana producing permanents to cast Displacer Kitten. No. With three mana still available, he ends his turn. In an effort to keep up with Johnny, Andrew casts Cultivate, searching his library for a mountain and a forest. He puts the mountain into play tapped, plays the forest as his land for turn, and casts Lanoir Elves before passing to Martin. I start my turn by playing an island and tap out to cast Thirst for Meaning. I draw three cards, discard Destiny Spinner to the spell, and discard down to seven before passing. Callum floats four mana, casts Talos Tracker, and plays a snow covered mountain. This triggers his tracker's ability, creating him a clue and Callum uses his Snowy Mountain and Floating Mana to immediately sacrifice the token. He draws a card, forgets to put a plus one plus one counter on his tracker, and ends his turn. In his turn, Johnny casts his commander, Evelyn the Covetous. Callum, Johnny, Andrew and I each exile the top cards of our libraries, and Johnny passes to Andrew. Andrew begins his turn by casting his commander, Xenagos, God of Revels. He then taps his elves to cast Rancor, enchanting the aforementioned Mana Dork with the aura, and passes. I play a Swamp, and joining in with Johnny and Andrew, cast my commander, Tatsunari Toad Rider. Ribbit. Finally in possession of a creature, I end my turn. Callum plays a forest, creates a clue, and casts one of his commanders, Kodama of the East Tree. Not liking the sound of this, Johnny counters the creature with a cheeky, disdainful stroke, and flickers his commander with a Displacer Kitten's ability. Everyone adds a top card of their libraries to Johnny's collection of stolen cards, and a rather annoyed Callum passes to Johnny. Johnny begins his turn by playing Lava Glide Pathway, and casts the Migration Path that he stole from Callum. He flickers Evelyn with his Kitty's ability, claiming the top card of everyone's libraries, and puts an island and a mountain into play when the path resolves. Leaving plenty of mana open for instant speed shenanigans, Johnny passes the turn. Andrew casts Sylvan Library and moves to combat. He uses Xenagos' ability to give his elf plus 3 plus 3 and attacks Johnny with the now 6-4 creature. Johnny declares no blocks, taking 6 damage, and Andrew ends his turn. Liking the look of Andrew's commander, I cast Mirror Maid, copying the very shiny deity. This triggers Tatsunori's ability, creating me a 3-3 Kami token, and moving to combat I give my commander plus 3 plus 3 with my Xenagos clone. I attack Johnny with the Toad Rider, and not wishing to take another 6 damage, 
Johnny blocks with Evelyn. Before damage occurs, Johnny casts the slip at the back that was in his pile of exiled cards, targeting his cat with the instant. The kitten's ability triggers, with Johnny once again flickering his commander, and everyone adds another card to Johnny's collection. Johnny then puts a plus one plus one counter on his displacer kitten, phases it out, and no combat damage occurs given that Evelyn ceased to exist for a moment. She's been doing that a lot lately. Disappointed, but not surprised by this outcome, I pass to Callum. Callum starts his turn by replaying Tectonic Edge, creating him another clue, and then casts Jahira, Friend of the Forest. He then taps his now mana producing clues to help cast Sarith, the Viper's Fang, and passes. Johnny plays the Reflecting Pool from his stash of exiled cards and casts Moldering Egg. Moving to combat, he seeks revenge on Andrew for attacking him, sending Evelyn and Displacer Kitten in his direction. Andrew responds by casting Kazul's Fury, sacrificing Lanawa Elves and targeting Displacer Kitten. In response to this response, Johnny casts Opt, flickering the kitty with their own ability. The feline re-enters the battlefield untapped and without a plus one plus one counter, and Andrew's spell fizzles about a target. At least he gets the Rancor back to his hand, so not a total loss. Opt then resolves, with Johnny scrying the top card of his library to the bottom before drawing. He then puts a single Ember counter on his Smouldering Egg, and damage occurs of Andrew taking two from Evelyn. With Andrew's only creature dealt with, Johnny ends his turn. Andrew draws two additional cards thanks to Sylvan Library, and pays four life to only put one of them back on top of his deck. Next he plays a Mountain, and taps out to cast Rurik Thra, the Unbowed. Not liking the look of this, Johnny responds by casting Brainstorm, flickering Evelyn and putting an Ember counter on his egg. All four players add a card to Johnny's ever-growing pile, and Brainstorm resolves, drawing Johnny three cards. He puts two cards from his hand on top of his library, and with Rurikthar still on the stack, casts Saw in half from his Evelyn pile. Johnny once again flickers his commander with Displacer Kitten's ability, adding the top card of Evelyn's libraries to his treasure pile. He then destroys his own kitty with his instant, creating two 1-1 one -one copies of the pussy, and puts three ember counters on Smouldering Egg. Still not finished, Johnny casts Dig Through Time, this time getting two Displacer Kitten triggers thanks to his sawn in half felines. Johnny puts eight more counters on his egg, transforming it into Ashmouth Dragon, and flickers both Evelyn and Arcane Signet. Johnny gains the top card of everybody's libraries and dig through time resolves, allowing Johnny to put two of the top seven cards of his library into his hand. Miraculously, Johnny fails to find a way to stop Rurikthar from resolving, and the ogre finally hits the battlefield. Well, that was certainly eventful. Moving to combat, Andrew gives his ogre plus six plus six and haste with Xenagos' ability, and sends the smashy creature at Johnny. Johnny declares no blocks, taking a whopping 12 damage, and Andrew passes to Martin. In my turn, I move straight to combat, targeting Tatsunori with my Xenagos' ability. I then activate the Toad Rider's ability, making him unblockable to creatures without flying or reach, and attack Callum. When able to block, he takes 6 damage, and I pass the turn. Callum begins his turn by recasting Kodama of the East Tree, and creates a clue, for some reason. Honestly, I couldn't figure out why whilst writing the script. Anyway, next he plays a forest, creating another clue like he's meant to, and taps them both to float two mana. Callan then uses this to sacrifice a clue, drawing himself a card, and remembers to put a plus one plus one counter on Tyler's tracker this time. With nothing more to do, he ends his turn, and Johnny responds to this by casting his exiled Runaway together. He targets Rurik Thraw and Tatsunara with a spell, takes 6 damage from Rurik Thar's ability, and deals Andrew 2 damage with his Ashmouth Dragon. Not yet finished, Johnny flickers Evelyn and Arcane Saint with his kitten's abilities, stealing the top card of each player's libraries. Runaway together then resolves, return the chosen cards to their owner's hands, and Johnny moves to his turn. Johnny starts his turn by casting Expressive Iteration, dealing 2 damage to Andrew with his dragon and flickering both Evelyn and Arcane Signet. 
we each exile the top cards of our libraries and Johnny looks at the top three cards of his deck. He puts one of these into his hand, one on the bottom of his library and exiles the third which is revealed to be Claim to Fame. Moving to combat, Johnny attacks me with his dragon, dealing me 4 damage. He then proceeds to his second main phase where he plays Carplusen Forest from his stockpile of exiled cards before passing to Andrew. In his turn, Andrew recasts Rukthar, which Johnny counters with Remand. Johnny deals 2 damage to Andrew with Ashmouth Dragon, Blinks Evelyn and Soul Ring and acquires the top card of everyone's library. Johnny then draws a card thanks to his counter spell and Andrew discards down to 7 before passing. I once again fail to draw a land, leading me to question where the heck it all is, and recast my commander. With a gut feeling that I'll soon be needing blockers, I discard down to 7 and end my turn without attacking. Callum plays a mountain, creating a clue as he does so, and sacrifices Jahira to help pay the emerge cost of Decimator of the Provinces. Each of his other creatures gains plus 2 plus 2 and trample thanks to the Eldrazi cast trigger and Callum continues his turn by casting Triumph of the Hordes. Ew. Each of his creatures gain plus 1 plus 1 and infect and Callum sacrifices a clue, drawing a card and putting a plus 1 plus 1 counter on Tyler's tracker. Moving to combat he attacks Andrew with his Kodama and Sarith and Martin with his tracker and boar. Martin blocks the tracker with both of his creatures, but with the scout having death touch and trample, would still be taking lethal infect damage alongside Andrew. Before damage occurs however, Johnny asks the soon to be defeated duo if they would like saving, and casts an overloaded cyclonic rift from his jumble of exiled cards. Ashmouth's dragon deals Martin 2 damage, the displacer kitten duo flicker Evelyn and Arcane Signet, and Johnny gains 4 more cards to his exile pile. All non-land permanents not controlled by Johnny are then returned to their owner's hands, and Callum swears revenge on Johnny before passing the turn to him. Johnny begins his turn by moving straight to combat, attacking me of his dragon. I take 4 damage from the scaly boy, and Johnny passes the turn. Andrew recasts in a ghost and ends his turn. I also recast my commander, discard down to 7 and pass to Callum. In his turn, Callum recasts Kodama of the East Tree, followed by Sol Ring. Unable to do anything else, he passes, and Johnny responds by casting Magma Opus. He flickers Evelyn and his Sol Ring, exiling the top cards of each player's libraries, and deals Martin 2 more damage with Ashmouth Dragon before casting Reverberate, copying the Opus and repeating his triggers. He once again deals Martin 2 damage with his dragon, flickers his commander and arcane signet and claims another card per player for his jumble of stolen goods. The copy of Magna Opus then resolves with Johnny dealing 3 damage to Tatsunari and 1 damage to Martin, tapping 2 of Andrew's already tapped lands, creating a 4-4 elemental token and drawing 2 cards. The original version of the spell then resolves with Johnny dealing 4 to Martin, tapping the same 2 lands, creating another 4-4 and drawing 2 more cards. Now that's what I call a productive end step. With no further interruptions, Johnny proceeds to his turn. Johnny starts his turn by moving straight to combat, attacking me with Evelyn and Ashmouth Dragon and Andrew with his 2 elementals. With neither of us able to block, I take 6, Andrew takes 8, and Johnny moves to his second main phase. Here he casts Fading Hope, dealing 2 damage to me with his dragon, and flickers Evelyn and his signet. Johnny takes the top card of each player's libraries, returns Kodama of the East Street to Callum's hand, and ends his turn. Andrew plays Castle Garenbrig as his land for turn, and casts Cogler the Titan Ape. He targets one of Johnny's Displacer Kittens with the Titan's ETB, and Johnny responds to this by casting Chaos Warp, dealing Andrew 2 damage and shuffling the ape back into Andrew's library. Andrew reveals the top card of his library to be a mountain, puts it onto the battlefield, and passes to me. I draw and play my first forest of the game, which I immediately use to help cast Kenris Transformation. I target a Displacer Kitten with the aura, and Johnny responds by casting Counter Squall. He deals me 2 damage, blinks Evelyn and a land, and acquires the top card of everyone's libraries. 
my enchantment is then countered, I lose 2 life, and I use my remaining mana to cast Awakened Awareness where X is 1. I enchant Callum Sol Ring in this way, making it a 1-1 creature, and pass the turn. In his turn, Callum recasts his Kadama, recasts Tyler's Tracker, and casts the Korra Tribe Elder. Out of mana, he ends his turn. Johnny starts his turn by casting Maestro Charm, choosing to deal 5 damage to Kadama of the East Tree. He then deals 2 more damage to the Spirit with Ashmouth Dragon, killing it, and flickers Evelyn and Arcane Signet. Johnny takes the top card from everyone's decks and Callum sacrifices his Sakura Tribe Elder to put a mountain into play from his library. Tyler's Tracker creates him a clue, and Johnny moves to combat. Here he attacks Callum with both of his elementals, to which Callum declares no blocks, taking 8 damage. Happy with his turn, Johnny passes to Andrew. Andrew begins his turn by casting Hydra Omnivore, to which Johnny responds by casting the Cling to Dust in his bundle of borrowed cards. He exiles the Rurik Thra in Andrew's graveyard, gains 3 life and deals 2 damage to Andrew and flickers both Evelyn and his Arcane Signet. Everybody adds the top card of their library to Johnny's stash, and Johnny recasts the Cling to Dust in his graveyard for its escape cost. He exiles a non-creature card from Andrew's graveyard, deals Andrew 2 damage with his dragon, and once again blinks his commander and his signet. Everybody donates the top card of their libraries to Johnny, and Johnny draws when his instant resolves. Andrew's Hydra then resolves, and Andrew moves to combat. Here he uses Zenigos' ability to double his Hydra's power, and attacks Martin with the aforementioned creature. He takes 16 damage, knocking him out of the game, and both Callum and Johnny also take 16 due to the Hydra's ability. Now that is a lot of damage. With one player down, Andrew passes to Callum. In his turn, Callum casts his second commander, Jessica Thrice Reborn, and Johnny responds to this by flashing in Omen of the Dead from his Evelyn card collection. Johnny targets Callum with his Ashmouth Dragon's ability, and Callum responds to this by casting Will's Reversal. With the spell on the stack, Callum sacrifices his clue, drawing a card and putting a plus one plus one counter on Tyler's Tracker. Callum then rolls a d20, getting a 3, and redirects the damage from his Ashmouth Dragon to Johnny. Well, that was a close one. Johnny then flickers Evelyn and his Sol Ring, taking the top card from everyone's libraries, and Omen of the Dead's ETB fizzles due to a lack of targets. Jessica then finally resolves, and Callum activates the Planeswalker's minus ability, where X is 5. He deals 5 damage to Johnny, killing him, 5 damage to Andrew, and knowing that he is unable to survive an attack from Andrew, who still has Rancor in hand, 5 to his tracker before conceding the game. Well, that is it for another game. I hope that you enjoyed watching Johnny blink his commander more than any man ever should do. I'd like to give a huge shout out to each and every one of our incredible patrons listed on screen, without whom we'd be unable to continue making content such as this, so thank you. Also, be sure to check out our affiliate links in the video description. It won't cost you anything extra to make your purchases through these links, but it really helps out the channel. And finally, don't forget that you can help to support the channel in four quick and easy ways, liking this video, subscribing, hitting that bell icon, and leaving us a comment, I read everyone. That's it for now though, we'll see you next time. Stay awesome!